Hi guys! Hey! So it is finally time for our van tour! Woo! It's been three long months. Yeah, pretty long, but we've got a break in the weather and we're going to take you through everything we've done and all the little areas. So... So I thought I'd explain first why we chose this van in particular. This is a Peugeot Boxer long wheelbase and we chose it for a number of reasons. The first one being the headspace it gives. So we're not that tall, thankfully, and that's a perfect amount of room for us. And secondly, we wanted to be able to have us two and bring two guests with us when we're driving. So that's why we have these chairs here, my lovely cameraman. But not only did we want them to be able to sit in here with us, we wanted them to be able to stay over. So we wanted two double beds. And we didn't want them in bunk style because we kind of wanted our own space as well. So the concept that we've come up with, the layout for the second double bed, is very unique. We've done a lot of research and didn't find anyone else who'd done this particular layout design. We're going to go into full detail about how we made the second double bed. But until then, let's continue with the rest of the banter. So, welcome to the living area. This is our lovely living area, very spacious. So I want to start off with the table, because I did this myself. This is basically a plywood that has been stained with a wood stain, but it's also been has Danish oil on it which makes it waterproof so we can actually drop food etc on this and it's all safe which is perfect um we have the, we have like a table leg as well that, oh yes we do and which uh, is really handy it pops, pops up, up. and um, then the whole table can be taken down so yes when we're driving it can come down but it's perfect it's a really big size as well i don't think we'd seen anyone with such a big table yeah yeah but it's perfect for having laptops on and having four people eating but yeah so we said we've got these seats here and then we also have this bench seating here, which Bradley particularly likes to sit on, quite cozy. There's also storage underneath here that we keep a bunch of bulky stuff. And we also have, I actually want to mention our plug sockets. We do have one under here, got a double plug socket, which again is perfect for our laptops because this is kind of like a dining area, but also, you know, an office area if you will, Brad's office area. I've chosen some more different. Anyway, so lighting wise, we have our little lights under here and they're part by this. This is really good for like setting the cozy mood in the van, especially if you don't want the rest of the other lights on. We have our storage here. These are pretty deep cupboards, which is perfect. There's one for me and one for Brad. I don't know if anyone's is them. Um, nope, no don't go in there. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> But yeah, so they're perfect. Um, and we have these little latches to hold everything in place when we are driving. We have our clock, which, you know, <laughs> so we don't have to look at our phones to tell the time, which is perfect. Then we also have these curtains here. So we've actually found, these are thermal curtains that I got off Amazon. Again, the reel is off Amazon too and we have discovered that once we put all the curtains across and the van's heated it holds heat really well so i think they work pretty good which is useful and we also have our bulkhead area so we have utilized this space we've got coats extra blankets extra bedding for the second double bed um yeah all the bulky stuff that you don't want other room being taken up with and mentioning that our little coat hooks 
We did have one, we had to get another one because we have far too many coats. But again, this helps save on the space and just keeps everything neat and tidy. So I think that is mainly the living area. I added in a few little, you know, ivory fake floors, but some there too. But yeah, so all very practical. Everything works well. Lots of space here, lots of leg room. Yeah, this, this space turned out quite well. So, welcome to our kitchen. <laughs> our wonderful kitchen. I'm very pleased with this kitchen for a number of reasons, but the first one is look at the size of our sink. So, you probably do see in a lot of van conversions the sink is quite small because you don't want to take up a lot of space. But Bradley loves having a big sink because he's very good with like doing his. I, I cook and he cleans, so if he wants a big sink, that's fine. But this is like such a great size and we have this um countertop space here which i actually find that there's there's so much space to cook on because i usually use this but i mean you've got and we room. normally chop on the table as well yeah so you, oh yeah there's just an abundance of space which is great but actually from that let's look at some storage so under here we have <laughs> we have my coffee machine because yes this van has an espresso machine in it which is um pretty good i'm pretty sure it's just filled with boxes at the minute isn't it yeah so it's got coffee boxes and storage and the coffee machine is slotted in behind i can't believe we have a whole cupboard dedicated to coffee some might say that's wasteful i don't but we have storage up here if you've seen our van bill series which you can check the links for in the description you will have seen this thing made it's very smart and bradley basically cut space for all the essential bits so these all slot in perfectly so that when we're driving around nothing falls out and nothing has fallen out so far so when we're works. back at christmas as well probably going to make a few upgrades because there's yeah. quite a lot of space not really being used so maybe put some hooks to hang the mugs and yeah well we'll we'll utilize the above space here which will be perfect so storage wise here is actually kind of there's some space in here but um but this is where the sink is so we've kind of just got like pots and pans nothing too major in there and this might look like storage but it's it's um it's got the gas canister so that stays in there oh and our little <laughs> brad loves this as well this is our drying tray which goes up there whenever we're doing the dishes no, we're very we're very clean in this one but yes so that's where our gas canister is held and this is um it's not a cupboard it's a <laughs> it's for what's under here our air heater it's the air heaters under there and actually the air heater vents here so this is where a nice hot air yeah the hot out. air comes out of which is actually really nice if you're cooking but there's another thing that helps keep this van warm without you know making it is this oven so this is our voyager 4 500 and it is so perfect so there's space for pizzas which is honestly and camemberts that's that's why i wanted this oven but it's perfect there's two burners and so far it has worked a treat it's really well and we've got our little green kettle which is perfect some storage here this is going to be painted in due course and our Backsplash, which we got off oh, Amazon, Amazon Stick company, Goo. Stick Goo, yes. Really good, slightly expensive, but definitely worth it because they were so easy to put on. I didn't put them on, but well, I did. But <laughs> they stick on. We have our little hanging mabobber <laughs> for our kitchen roll. We have our magnetic knife rack, which was actually off Amazon as well. I feel like a bottle. <laughs> this van off amazon but so far no one's been impaled so yes. it's worked pretty well yeah everything holds well um then we have our control panel here we have got yes so this is our water heater brad's going to go into the details of all the kind of technical stuff later but yeah so this is everything's next to the bed which is what we wanted so that our heater right here in the morning we don't have to fight over who has to switch on the heating you can just press it on from bed, which is wonderful. 
And this is the inverter switch. This is our solar panel. So we are like panel to see what our charge is. The carbon monoxide alarm. And then these are our light switches. So this one is this one. And then these are the back ones for the bedroom. This is our fridge and water pump, which is great. And we also have extra lighting underneath here, which honestly, I it's think a bit overkill. A bit overkill, but I mean, it's nice to have the options. So, but we don't really use them yet, but we may do in the future. But yeah, so I think that's almost everything in this area. I think we've utilized this space quite well. We went for like the country barn style look with them, um, the cladding here. Um, yeah, and I'm really pleased with how it turned out. Whenever you're cooking and Brad's over there, it feels like you've got so much space. Like, I can move around. <laughs> oh yeah, actually. Plenty of room for activities, huh? <laughs> it's lunch. No, but yes, last thing, we have the fridge here. So originally we were going to try and put the fridge over this end, but in terms of space, we couldn't, but it fitted perfectly under the bed here. Um, and when I'm cooking, I can easily get this open, which is ideal. Again, feels like there's loads of space. We have little um, spice rack things here as well. But no spices. Not yet. I haven't thought of that one yet. <laughs> it's really bad. And uh, we also have this deep drawer, which has got soups and our little um, cutlery drawer. Which, so this keeps everything kind of organized, I think. Um, yeah, and it's pretty, it's pretty spacious. And I think, I think that's everything in my kitchen area. So just a few other things. We have a little bit more storage down here and then we have a tiny bin. It would have been nice to have a bigger bin, but there's, there's just no space for it. So this is good because you can easily get rid of rubbish this way because it can fit in normal bin bags. But we also have our little laundry bag too, courtesy of my mother, thank you. But that's perfect, hangs there, and then we take that to the laundrette whenever we need to do laundry. And if we just turn around this way, we enter the next room, which is the bathroom. Yes, we have a shower in this van. This was something we really wanted to incorporate. The size kept getting smaller and smaller, but this is actually perfect for us because you can get in, you can shower, and there's still room to move around. And um, we have, we obviously take these out, but this holds the tiles perfectly. Um, yes, and we also have a toilet. We have a porta potty that fits perfectly in there. And I think we're gonna show you exactly. The toilet's perfect, it's actually, a family sized toilet <laughs> so it lasts a bit, little bit longer but yeah so your feet may stick out when you sit in it but that's uh, one of the things that you have to compromise on when you're living in a, a van but yeah perfect we've got our shower got our toilet got our little bathroom area and we absolutely love this tile look at it it's class it's from dbs bathrooms and i think it just makes it look like an actual bathroom so it's great love it welcome to my office which is the bed. <laughs> I said Brad works down there. I work here because it's very comfy. This bed is perfect. We, it's like lengthwise. I have room to wiggle my feet. It's really cozy. And one of the best things about this bedroom is obviously our little porthole windows. So we wake up in the morning and we can have a nosy on of what's going outside. And these do open up demonstrate as so like this and you can check outside which is great I also have a little ledge here which Bradley built so when I'm working in bed I can pop my coffee here which is perfect we've got some fairy lights going on here we have storage so we have more closed storage over this area one for me one for Brad I'm not going to open them because they're probably not clean but you get the gist of it but yes great room and we also have our skylight here which um yeah opens if we push the button, oh, push the button. <laughs> and you can get views i mean we actually popped our head out to hear fireworks one night so it is useful and um, i can actually fit through it yes 
to solar, get onto the roof and sort solar panels if we ever have any issues yeah um, if needed we'll talk solar momentarily but um yeah and um you can cover it at night block side the light and it's perfect one other thing to mention is we have a max fan but i'll take you over there um so that's going to be useful in the summer and the hot months and we can control it from bed as well because we have a remote for it perfect <laughs> perfect demonstration but yes those of space we have our little lights there's one there there's one by mine as well reading lights and we also have usb ports which we can plug in our phone to charge at bed i mean it makes us sound really lazy but when we were building this van we wanted to be able to access everything from bed and do everything from bed and honestly like you can see the layout we can we can reach here we can even reach the fridge if we really wanted to and we can charge what we need from bed so it's super comfortable this bed as well brad will tell you he struggles to get me up in the morning <laughs> <laughs> it's it's so cozy so that's true yeah but yeah, so, and we've decorated it, well, I have with, um, again, some fake ivory and fairy lights. So it's super cozy in the evenings to just watch a movie. It's great. But yeah, that's the bedroom area of my van. Okay, so I'm going to take you guys through all the technical parts of the van. So our water, gas and electricity. Um, I had so many worries about these three things when we started the van. Um, and it's like a long time to create the system we have in place but we're actually pretty happy with how things turned out so while i'm here let's take a quick look on the roof and show you our solar uh, so just gonna head up through the midi heggy this is so good right ta-da Look at that. So that's our max fan at the end. And then we knew that had to be there. We knew our midi hecky had to be there. So each panel is 160 watts. Yes, so we have 480 watts in total, which is a lot for a camper van. I mean, you can fit on more, but for a two people set up, it's like more than enough. So yeah, really happy with that. They're all linked up in series and they're mounted on these blocks. There is, uh, in one of the videos, it shows us uh, how we mounted this. So I'll put a link in the description or if you go to our van build series, you can see it. Uh, and then, yeah, there's just a junction box. So the cables come through here, go down the side of the wall and then down to um, the batteries below, which I'll take you down to now. But yeah, having this midi hecky is pretty handy because if ever we need to clean them, if you haven't yet, then we can just get up here with a broom or a hose or whatever. Um, quite handy, I guess, if we're in snow. <laughs> Welcome to our garage area. Ta -da. Ta -da. <laughs> that was one of the great things about building the bed this way, is that all of the stuff you don't want to see in a van, in a camper van, can just go underneath. Um, so we tried to keep it organized. Um, you see here on the right, this is the space that was sort of left, which is like our main storage area. There's like a duvet at the back here. This goes on the second double bed. We'll show you that soon. Camping chairs, some gym stuff. And we have another box as well that goes in there and a couple of stair, um, spare water bottles that we keep back here. Uh, let's start with the electrics. So you've already seen the solar panels on the roof. Uh, they are used to charge our batteries, which are in here. Now, these beasts are 220 amp hours each. So we have 440 amp hours of battery, which is a lot. And they each weigh about 70 kilos. So there's a lot of weight in there. Um, but they're AGM, they're deep cycle. Um, we did a lot of research and in the UK these seem to be about the best ones we could get like sort of the biggest capacity we could get um, in terms of keeping them charged up we have the solar but we also have this which is a 60 amp battery to battery charger what that does is whenever the van is driving and 
is running and the starter battery is being charged by the alternator, um, it then sends charge through this and into the batteries. This is really important because it actually monitors the amount of charge coming through and only allows charge to go through when the starter battery is above a certain level so it doesn't get killed. If you have a smaller battery setup, you can get a split charge relay, but because we have so much battery power, this was essential. But so far it has been really good. And we're in Scotland, which, I mean, it looks nice now, but this is the <laughs> only day so far it's been like this. So this has been a godsend. Uh, and then the other thing in here is our inverter. So this is a 1500 watt pure sign inverter. Uh, we bought that basically because of Cassie's coffee machine. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> which has a 1200 watt i think like startup so that's why we bought that um but again it's been perfect um we'll put a link in the description because i know you can get a lot of dodgy ones but this is was about 160 quid and it's done really well so far yeah i think that's about it for in there by the way excuse the woodwork <laughs> we've put a lot of care into decorating everything in the living space the yeah edges. but yeah but um, kind of pretty neat yeah. Uh, so the rest of our electric so this so I said before about the solar uh, panels the cables come through the wall and they go into this which is an MPPT solar charge controller um, and that I, I don't understand exactly what this does but you <laughs> does need something. it you need it and this is a good one MPPT they say is like a better one to get and it's a 40 amp one um, and again, I think you need to get like a bigger one and better one depending on how much solar panels you have on the roof or how many watts of solar you have. So that was for us. That's the one we went for. This is our, on the side of the van, we have a 200 behind this, we have a 240 volt hookup point. So if we're ever at a campsite, we can plug into that and then we can run everything in the van off of that. All you simply do is switch this over to number two. Smart but we wanted a real off-grid system. So one yeah. of the reasons why everything in here is like so beasty, we've got such big batteries and so much solar, is that we, we never really want to camp anywhere. We want to be wild camping. Um, so, and so far, I mean, after over two weeks, our system has been absolutely perfect for that. Um, so yeah, but it's there just in case. This is our 12 volt fuse board. Apologies if I, my words aren't technical. And apologies for the cables as well. It probably looks a bit messy, but... Yeah, it's actually pretty pretty clean compared to some cables. Yeah, kind of. Kind it's of. semi. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the van light kept evolving and, you know, the space kept on changing. So, if I had to do it again, it'd be a little more ordered. But, I mean, it's perfectly fine. It's perfectly safe. Um, so, this is our 12-volt switchboard, which has 11 different appliances coming off of it. You know, so everything in the van is 12 volts, except for obviously the plug sockets and a water heater. But yeah, so everything runs through this and we just need to get a few more stickers to this what they are. Uh, so that's our electric system. So the other big thing back here is our water tank. So we have a 70 litre fresh water tank. This is a Fiamma or Fiamia, however you say that. Uh, this is really cool because it can be mounted any way you want really it can be on its side on its back upside down whatever and there's different points where you can sort of pour the water and fill it from uh, this is the setup we want went for we are actually pretty happy with it in the end so let me talk you through so in the back here um, is a water pump so in the back here this is where the water comes out of it gets sucked up through the water pump, or for a filter, through a water pump, through uh, an accumulator and onwards. I'll talk about the rest in a minute. To fill this thing, this bad boy up, there is a fill point on the side here. So that comes off there, and then we fill up through there. Um, as it's filling up, the uh, air inside the tank comes out through this hose here, and this level connects to the bottom and to the top, so whatever the level inside of the tank is, this will fill up. So it's really handy to see how much water's left. So as you can see, we've got just under half. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a pretty good setup. It can be quite slow to fill up because you can only fill it up as quickly as the air comes out. Um, but so a lot of the time what we do is we pull this hose off 
up here and hold it upwards and you can fill it a bit quicker. And then, so once the water comes out, it comes, it runs down. This is the cold feed, runs straight down and along. And that tees off to our shower and to our sink. And then the hot feed comes from here. So in here is our water heater. This is a Malaga 5E. It's a beast. Yeah, <laughs> it was, I mean, it's one of the best ones, one of the top recommended ones to get. I think it cost about 400 or so pounds. Uh, and it can run off gas, electric, or both. So it can heat a full tank, I think, how big's the tank in there? 10, Ten litres. Um, it can heat it in as little as about 15 minutes, maybe, or a bit shorter. Um, but if you're doing just gas, it's maybe 20 minutes. Uh, so yeah, so the cold water goes in there, hot feed comes out the top and then runs along through to the front of the van. Um, yeah. And this here is a gas drop vent. So if there was a this is a sealed box, and if there was a leak at all, it would come out and go straight through underneath the van. Um, the only other thing I guess to point out is that everything really is heavily made of wood. Um, it is under the weight limit. A lot of people worry that um, a lot of people say to us, that, "Is it gonna? Is it over?" <laughs> yeah, is it over? And it was a big worry for us at the start. But no, it was about three tons. Yeah. Um, with a full water tank and full fuel tanks there's loads of room for people and clothes and everything so yeah we're fine but the bed itself is made of wood uh, we've got these holes cut into it mm -hmm. the wood looks messy because if you've watched our videos you'll see <laughs> this workbench <laughs> yeah this was our workbench um, up until the very last day okay. yeah um, so no, yeah it's basically a good setup for us um, it's probably maybe a couple of things I'd change slightly if we did it again but yeah I'm really happy with how it's turned out Great. Okay, so as Kazi said at the start, one of the most important things for us when building this van was to have two double beds so that when people came out to stay with us, they had a cozy place to sleep. So this area here is what becomes the bed. Now, when you do uh, a lot of research on YouTube or Google, you soon find that to have two double beds, most people have like a stackable bunk system or one that sort of drops down. We didn't want that because we wanted to be able to lay in bed and just look at the sky and also to have a garage area. Um, some other people have three seats in the front and one seat in the back and a double bed, but we also wanted to have just two seats in the front. Currently, we still have three, but the plan at Christmas time is to take out that middle or take out the double and put a single one in and then turn them into swivels. So that left us with really limited options because we basically wanted everything in our van. Uh, but in the end, we got it. <laughs> uh, so we're going to stand you there and we're going to do a quick lapse to see how it comes together. Let's go. <laughs> happened there <laughs> so how did that happen <laughs> that was a bradley creation right there um so yeah so the top part of that work surface uh detaches from those four clasps it lays down on the floor that bottom box had those slats that come out there is another bit of wood that goes under here so uh on the side of the box there was like a little ledge and there is a bit of wood that slots on here um it's not on there at the moment but it does exist uh and yeah so it forms a very small double. <laughs> very, but it's still a double. It's still a double, and it is comfy. I've slept in it before. Um, yeah, so it worked out pretty well in the end. It was kind of an idea that we really weren't too sure would work until the very end, and it did. So we're quite happy, and it means that we still have that big open living area for everyone to sit. It means it's also a nice, cozy double bed, I guess, when they come and stay. I've just realized something as well. Whenever the bed is up and two people are in here, and there's two people up here, you've still got all this room to move and go to the bathroom without like clambering over someone or waking the other person up. So, or if you want to make yourself a cup of tea, so it's yeah. actually really good. Or do your lunges or something? <laughs> yeah, or yeah, squats. I mean, so much room. <laughs> so that's the end of the van tour. Yes, we hope that you enjoyed it, and we hope that you like our van as much as we like it too. 
we've been uh, living in it now for about two weeks. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're traveling around Scotland and then the plan in the new year is to head across Europe and then the eventual dream is to maybe even drive around the whole world in it. Yeah, and that's the plan. That's actually where the idea of the van build came from, was that we'd seen a few other people attempting to drive around the world and it was like, okay, that seems kind of cool. So we were like, yeah, yeah. let's get a van and so let's drive around the world. <laughs> it's kind of like our forever van because the yeah. idea is we will be able to use this to drive around the world. Okay. Um, but that being said, there's definitely a lot we picked up along the way. Yeah. Um, so maybe I just want to give you a few tips or thoughts on what it's like to actually build a van. We had absolutely no experience um, any sort of building at all or DIY even. I mean, we're travel bloggers and writers, so. Yeah, I'd never used a drill before though. No. <laughs> um, and I think we didn't do too bad a job. Oh, it's not stopping. <laughs> it's literally just not even fucking stopping. I have no idea what it's gonna do. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> it's not stopping. <laughs> so honestly, anyone can do it. Uh, we definitely got a lot of help, so a big thank you to friends and family and yes. of course our uh, electrician and yes. our gas guy. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, shout out to all the people that do help us. A few, we're going to make a few upgrades in the in the yeah. months to come, so we want to, as I said before, we're going to take those double seats out and put a single seat in so then we can walk in and out more easily between the front and back. Mm -hmm. Also, um, we want to uh, take out the gas so we have the gas canister stored inside um, but it takes up quite a lot of space um, and we've realized that we probably could do with another cupboard yeah because a lot of our cupboard space is clothing and um and yeah whenever i was putting the kitchen together and stuff i realized oh actually for like food stock you've got the fridge but for like actual food stock and you know fruit and veg and stuff that doesn't go in the fridge and even just pots and pans and stuff there wasn't that much space but it was kind of too late to fix it there and then but then we realized oh there's a solution to the gas which is an underslung lpg tank yes so we're going to pick one up uh so it's now november we're mm -hmm. going to pick one up in december and fit it over christmas before mm -hmm. we head across to europe and that will free up that entire cupboard uh, the good thing as well about the underslung one as well is once it's like full it's going to take ages for it to run out so we don't have to worry about every 10 days or whatever trying to find a way to refill our gas which is going to be really useful yeah and it just um and in europe as well you need a refillable tank um mm -hmm. as opposed to a calor or something which in the uk you can use but as soon as you head abroad it's a nightmare so that's the big plan um in the future we could we may even put a um so we have a waste tank underneath the van we may even take our fresh water and put that underneath as well so we, you can buy a custom made one for this van um we're not going to do it at christmas we may do it in the future if we decide to head a lot further afield um yeah but these are all just little things that yeah. we you know we can upgrade to make the van even better as we go on only um, once you start living in it you start to have these ideas and you realize that it's never truly done there's always more to it <laughs> yeah which that's is a depressing thought in some way. <laughs> There's always something else that you have to spend money on. Yeah. <laughs> but speaking of money, I guess you'd probably be curious to know what the total was. Yeah. Like how much this van conversion cost. Um, we set off with a budget of, I think, what do we say? Like maybe about 10,000 10, all in. <laughs> all in, including the price of the actual van, which in hindsight was, um, you can do that. You absolutely can but it wouldn't be to the standard that we did it to because we yeah. want to live in it full time we haven't skimped on like um you know heater he yeah water heater oven those were bigger things the important Expensive stuff things, yeah. yeah so we thought we'll buy we'll buy the right thing rather than the wrong thing and then having to spend money to fix it that yeah. was the idea so in the end the van itself we paid six and a half thousand for and that's mm -hmm. a late 20 that's a 56 plate it's a 2016 um, Peugeot Boxer with 107,000 miles on the clock. It's also mm -hmm. um, got inbuilt sat nav and reversing cameras, cruise controls. It's got some really so it was a really good deal on the van itself, and then the rest of the build was probably about 10,000. Yeah. So all in about 16,000. That includes um, paying for, like our gas 
guy, um, a gas engineer, paying for an auto electrician, um, a mechanic. Uh, we fixed a couple of little things on the van. Um, yeah, that's everything. That's every. Oh, that's, that's insurance. Yeah, that's insurance. Yeah, that's well, insurance. Yeah, the is, first yeah. year. That's first year insurance. That is everything. Yeah. I think we we're so, yeah we're mid range in yeah. terms of maybe like van conversion costs. I'd say we're somewhere yeah. in the middle. But but yeah, the problem with us was that. We started out thinking, okay, we'll do it to this standard and then we'll spend more money on it. But when you're doing it, you realize it's just better you to just do, it. do it. <laughs> you just want to get it done because do you it. do not want to have to come back to it. Yeah. <laughs> so if you guys do want to check out how the build went and you haven't watched it already, we have a full 13 week series on the entire van build, which covers absolutely everything. Um, we may even put together some more videos on little elements. Yeah. If you've got any questions, just drop a comment below. Uh, would be happy to help. Um, yes, yes. Pass on our new knowledge. Well, we're still learning, so. Yeah, we're far from um, know, knowing everything, but. But I think definitely the fact that we've done this is definitely just hope for anyone who wants to do it. We could do it anyway. <laughs> and that's not even like saying as an exaggeration. Like we had, yeah. No experience. no experience. Be yes. sure to subscribe to the channel so you can follow our adventures around the rest of Scotland and yes. further afield. Yeah, we're going to keep uploading. We're going to be doing vlogs um, hopefully once, twice a week. So you can keep up to date with our adventures. And yeah. And if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up because it's really helpful with YouTube's algorithm, apparently. Yeah. But yes, thank you so much for watching. See you guys. Bye.